see him. He's walking over. Fuck. All right. Hello. I know I already posted a video, but I have the day off and I'm fired up and a lot of y'all keep requesting the story time about how I got fired. I filmed it while I was putting my makeup on and it was all over the fucking place. So I decided to sit down and film it again, but this time in my little room where my cats live and my computer lives because I need to pull up my Reddit post because this shit did happen quite a while ago. I don't really remember it that well in the sequence of events. So I'm gonna be referencing this Reddit post because I put like the whole story on Reddit. So sorry if I'm reading a screen and not looking directly into the camera. I know that that bothers some of y'all, but I'm literally reading my fucking post because this was, you know, I posted this kind of when it was going on, so it was way more fresh. So I think it's better to just read this. Also, I'm not wearing my glasses because I don't want y'all to have the reflection because I know that bothers some of y'all as well, so pardon me, sir or madam. The TLDR on why I got fired is because I recorded a resident, and per policy, we're not allowed to record residents. But let me read you this post so that you understand why I recorded this particular resident. Okay, let's start from the beginning, shall we? I work in the leasing office at a property in Texas. I also live on site. We have about 400 apartments and take up two sides of a street. I live across the street in the very back and try to keep to myself. I don't like for residents to know that I live there. About two months in, a woman and her two grown sons lease the apartment with us. The sons are twins, one has special needs and the other is, well, different. He has a very active imagination and is very focused on sex. Almost immediately after they moved in, things started getting weird. The first encounter. One day I was crossing the street after work to go home. As soon as I reach the other sidewalk, I hear a voice call out, Hey yo Raquel! I turned towards the voice, which I realized was coming from the bus stop at the end of the street. I didn't recognize who it was until I got a little closer. Who the fuck is that? I was thinking to myself. We met face to face and I realized who it was from when he moved in. I knew he was a little weird, so I was trying to keep my distance while still being polite. He's easy to piss off and I do not know what he's capable of. I later found out what he's capable of, by the way. But I don't want to make him think that there's anything behind the polite hello. He starts telling me that I look just like his baby mama who lives in North Texas, then jumps on a different subject about how he had just ran all the way from downtown to here, then decides to tell me his entire family history, naming all of his cousins and homeboys, rambling on and on about essentially nothing. I haven't said anything other than, oh, uh-huh, okay, this entire fucking time. Every interaction that I had with him was that. Oh, while well, he rambles at me. By the way, I found the footage because I had deleted the video from YouTube, but I found the footage on my computer and I think I'm going to piece it together a little bit in the story so you can see because he rambled at me. I'll try my best to, you know, hide his identity since he found my YouTube channel so he can't sue me for like defamation or whatever. I don't fucking know. I keep taking steps backwards to indicate that I'm trying to leave, but he keeps talking and moving closer to me. As I'm trying to leave, I notice that he has a huge boner. He was wearing basketball shorts, as always, so it's pretty difficult to hide. This creeps me the fuck out and I somehow managed to get away from him. He sat at the bus stop staring at me as I walked away and I didn't want him to know that I lived there, so I just kept walking down the street to make it look like I lived elsewhere. Every now and then I would see him around the property or he would come to the office and talk at me. I call it talking at me because it's never a two-way conversation. The leasing office had a hallway leading to the manager's office, the copier, the package room, whatever, and there was a door on it, which came in handy quite a bit. His visits got to the point where every time I saw him walking up to the office, I would run and hide in the back and let the other staff deal with him. He wasn't creepy towards them and they knew the situation, so it was cool. Cut to December, our office was being remodeled, so we were using our business center as a temporary workspace. It's only one room, there's only one way in or out, and no place to hide. I was alone in my office one day, and who should come walking in but my nightmare? He needed to borrow our copy of his mail key because he misplaced his or didn't have one or whatever. We have to take an ID in order to release keys, and he didn't have this, so he had to go to his apartment, get the ID, and come back. In that time while he was gone, I set up my phone on my coworker's desk and I started recording video in case any crazy shit happened so that I would have the evidence. He noticed the tattoo on my shoulder and commented on it asking, yeah. is that your name or? 
Oh, yeah, nice, uh, you know, you know your tattoos. Huh? Yeah, you know your nice tattoos. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, 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 that's your name or? No, it's my grandma's name. Why in the hell would I have my own name tattooed on myself? I tell him that's my grandmother's name, which sends him into this whole spiel about how he has his grandmother tattooed on him and how he's an artist and he draws people's faces. Yeah, yeah, sure, man. I got tattooed too from, uh, yeah, you know, from my grandmother. Uh -huh. she, she passed away in like 89. Yeah, that's my mom's mom. And, uh, yeah, she was dying of breast cancer. Yeah, so, now I can't do it. Hey, this, um, I'm gonna come right back and check the mail, so I'll give it to you. Okay. He leaves to go check his mail, then returns a few minutes later. However, when he returns, he has added something to his ensemble. He now has a pencil behind his ear, I suppose to make him look like more of an artist. Then he said he was gonna draw my face, but I'd have to send him a picture so that he can look at the image of me. I'll be back. I'm going back and get some man, save the day. Yeah, man, like I said, because, uh, I mean, I'm an artist too, also. I draw like random faces, I draw your face or somebody's face. You know what I'm saying? So I've been to a yeah, tattoo shop like uh, two years ago. I said, hey, uh, I mean, I, I see your job, man. Can you make this tattoo with my grandma? Said, oh, yeah, man, I know your grandma, your mom's mom, yeah. So can you make it on my back? Yeah, sure. I may take a little pain for it, take about like 45 minutes. And I was like, <laughs> she opened my twin brother said, come on, come on, suck it up, suck it up, man. I said, I can't, I can't. You know, and uh, so, so I, I mean, I, I look, I said, oh man, I mean, look the same. Yeah, the same face. Uh -huh. So, I mean, tattoos are all right, but some things, I mean, they don't know where they do it, you know. So, you know, my, uh, my baby mama's uh, homegirl, I mean, she don't know what she's doing. So, she lives in Dallas, uh, Grand Perry. And uh, she was like, okay, what? Uh, okay, yeah, okay, how to do this, how to do that? Do? I'm like, uh, I said, Erica, no, man, I just, I just tell John to do it. So, what we'll good with you? Good? Yeah, no, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 you know, you no. Know, I, I mean, I haven't seen you for a minute, you know, I was... I was on vacation for yeah, a little Dallas, bit. Yeah, Dallas, yeah, 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 talk about it. Yeah, yeah me too, I was in uh, Marshall, Texas. Oh. You know, yeah, close by Shreveport, and yeah, my daughter's 10th birthday, you know, she lives in Marshall, you know. And uh, I, I mean, I give every day, you know, the Christmas day, that's her birthday on Christmas. So I was about like 23 of them. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, thank you, daddy, this and that, this and that. So, I mean, it's like my baby mom was like, okay, hey, we can go back to Austin. I'm like, hey, slow down. I just, you know, take care of my daughter, just so make sure she good, you know? And I mean, she ain't say nothing. And, uh, and her mom would say, you know what? You a good person. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? To take, uh, to take care of my granddaddy. I said, anytime. Appreciate it, you know? So I just, you know, you know just move forward and just keep pushing, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, my birthday already been passed. I'm 29. I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll be almost three to zero. I was like, mm, gonna be over the hill. <laughs> I'm 60 years old now, I'm the old man, but my daughter uh, uh, had a kid by then. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I mean, it's like all my grandbabies like, hey, uh, hey, Grandpa, Grandpa, why are you single, man? And I was like, mind your business. He was like, okay, I'm just asking. I said, no, you ask so much, but you got for me. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because cause my dad is the third, I'm the fourth, and my grandfather is the second, and my great-grandfather is, 
number one. And I know him, I was about seven, eight. And uh, I mean, he's a mean type. You know, that every time, like, I mean, he drank, he drank a whole lot. So I, mean, I told him, I said, yo, man, yo, you need to stop drinking alcohol. And uh, he was like, man, tell me, tell me, what the F you say? He said, I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm, tell you, I'm 79 years old, man. Don't tell me what I said. All right. Well, so I, mean, I found out, man, he passed away. I was about 14. Yeah, he was about 93. He gone, man. Mm -hmm. So all he had left, man, is my dad and, you know, my grandfather. So that's two left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, what you doing this weekend? Oh, that's why you yeah, you yeah, did yeah, tell me you work for seven days. No. I work on Saturdays. Six days. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Hey, yeah, just let me know. Now I'm drawing a, you know, uh picture on you, uh, you know, say sketch. First we gotta send them a picture and then I, you know, look the image on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so so I'll show it to you. I mean, not tomorrow. So tomorrow, I'll be at work six thirty in the morning in the hospital. So I'm gonna show it to you on on Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Just send a picture of you. So just give it to me. So I draw it. Oh, okay. All right. Have a good day. Oh, you yeah, too. What the fuck? <laughs> he said he would draw me and bring the picture to the office later that week. I did not send him a fucking picture. Fucking no. Months go by, no picture. I was walking through the pool to go walk an apartment and he catches me in the pool area. Book. No escape. He presents me with... Well, I don't really know what to call it. <laughs> it's me, or I guess how he sees me. The picture was drawn on lined notebook paper in pen and it looked like he threw it together in three minutes. He drew me black. I'm white wearing a short, tight dress, not something that I would wear, legs two different sizes, maybe for perspective, I don't know, maybe, you know, he's an artist, carrying a purse with a, a little Texas on it. And it was very creepy. I keep it on my fridge to remind myself that I'm not safe. That's true. I fucking put that shit on my refrigerator to remind myself every single morning when I got up to make coffee that I am not safe in this place that I live in. I need to be on my fucking guard fucking 100% of the time. Upon closer inspection of said drawing, I noticed that he drew nipples on it under the dress and I thought, oh my God, did he originally draw this naked? The next day, I talked to the maintenance man about it and he says that he did originally draw it naked, but he decided to put clothes on it because giving it to me like that would be too forward. What the actual fuck? Now, the maintenance man that I'm mentioning here is the only maintenance guy that would entertain him when he would talk because this guy, he says he has a job because in the video, he says that he's got work at like 6.30 in the morning or something, but he always walks around the fucking property and he'll try and stop and talk to anybody that he fucking can and he just talks at them. And so one of the maintenance guys would like listen to him when he stopped and he talked a lot about me and this maintenance guy would relay that information to me. So when I'm referring to the maintenance man, that's who the fuck I'm talking about. One day I was walking out of the pool gates and he was walking in through another. I saw him out of my peripherals, but I didn't acknowledge him because, well, you get it. He says, hey, yo, Raquel. Twice in a very low voice and I'm hard of hearing so I can get away with ignoring people and pretending like I didn't hear them. Apparently this made him angry. The reason I know this is because he talks to one of our maintenance staff about me regularly. According to him, I was very rude and he don't play that where he's from. The next few times I saw him, he had this like deranged look in his fucking eyes like he was disgusted by me. It also kind of looked like he wanted to hurt me. <laughs> A few weeks go by and he apparently gets over being mad and resumes being the creepiest motherfucker alive. The maintenance man tells me that he claimed to have met my boyfriend and that he's a cool dude, so he's gonna back off. I asked my boyfriend if he had ever met him and he says no. The maintenance man tells me that he claims to have met my parents when they stopped in for a visit and that they were really nice, cool people. 
I asked my parents if they spoke to or saw anyone while visiting me at work and they also said no. I don't know how or when he could have met them or even saw them because they were there for like literally five minutes in to say hello and then out back in their truck and fucking left. I confirmed from multiple different fucking people that were there that he was nowhere around. Like, is he hiding in the fucking bushes? Recently, I had decided to use our fitness center late at night. The fitness center has big windows that overlook the second pool that's on that side of the property. And while I'm on the treadmill, which is in front of one of these windows, he appears staring at me through the glass, waving at me, watching me. I pretend that there's a glare on the window and that I didn't see him and he disappeared into the dark shadows in the pool area and I continued my workout. The next day, the maintenance man tells me that he had talked to our friend and he could not stop talking about how he saw me in the fitness center. He went into detail about what I was wearing, how form-fitting it was, how sweaty I was, overall creepy shit that gave me the chills, I avoid the fitness center and use my real gym to avoid seeing him again. A few days go by and my informant, the maintenance man, you get it, tells me that my stalker was wondering why I stopped going to the gym. Apparently, ever since that fateful night, he had been returning to the pool area around the same time to wait for me so that he could watch me work out again. Fucking nope. He starts showing up at the office more frequently and I have to avoid him. Friday, he's sitting in the pool area behind the office, directly behind where my desk is. There's like a huge window right there. I turn to get something out of my cabinet and I catch him staring at me. Is sitting outside. Oh, you can't see, it's too bright. Right behind where I am, there's a pillar in the way so he can't see this. Just fucking drawing his ass off. I fucking turned my chair around to get into this cabinet right here and uh, caught him staring at me between the pillar and the window and he waved at me. I don't know what he's drawing. I'm kind of afraid because what if it's he, he's drawing me in my workout outfit because he was so fucking smitten. Like, I don't need another one of those. There he is. He's a real person. What is he drawing? This is my stalker in the flesh and you saw him look over there that snap ended short because i got scared that he would see me and so i stopped it she says that he's drawing me a tattoo a nice one too fucking why <laughs> why my my co-worker is gonna tell you why the fuck he's drawing me a tattoo all right so that's who this fucking is oh the other day i saw him outside and he's like hey yo rachel wants me to draw her a tattoo So he's like, Rachel wants me to draw this tattoo. He's like, but you know, I'm a good drawer. I got her, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. I want to see this tattoo, you know, when you're finished. So he's been drawing there for about 30 years. I don't remember asking him to draw me a tattoo, but apparently I'm getting a tattoo. And she saw it. She said it's a cross with my name going down the middle. If you know me, you know that's going to burn my flesh. I can only hope that he waits until Friday to turn it in because uh, Thursday is my last fucking day here. And Jesus fucking Christ, no. He waved. I flash a nervous peace sign and then proceed with my business. He's not in swimwear, but rather fully dressed. He has a notebook with him and is frantically drawing something. I think, great, here comes another picture of me, but this time in my workout clothes. Nope. My coworker went to put up the golf cart and close the cabana. She has to go through the pool area to do this. So she got a glimpse of what he was drawing. It was a cross with my name going down the middle of it. According to him, I asked him to draw a tattoo for me. So that's what he was doing. Drawing a tattoo for me with my own fucking name on it. He says he's going to give it to me the next day. The next day he didn't show up. I'm not sure when I asked him to draw me the tattoo, but I'm pretty sure it was a fucking never. Two weeks pass and I think that maybe he isn't gonna give me the drawing and enough time has passed that he gave up and I could go to the fitness center again. My friend and I went around 8 p.m. and we didn't see any signs of him, so we went ahead with our workout. I was flipping over to do leg raises on my right side, which causes me to face the door. Chills engulf my entire existence and my heart stops for a second. He's standing directly across the street, on the phone, staring at me through the door. I started to panic and find a place to hide from view. Peeking around the corner, I see him turn and walk through the outside hallway behind the leasing office, which is his normal route to his apartment. Hoping that he wouldn't come back for a while, we continue our workout. I keep glancing out of the windows every few seconds to make sure he isn't there. 
He reappears, still on the phone, but this time he starts pacing around the fitness center very slowly, looking through the windows with this creepy ass side glance. Like I wouldn't be able to see him creep in through all those fucking windows. The fitness center is basically one giant fucking window. I keep trying to hide from view and I'm waiting for an opportunity to get the fuck out of there. I'm hiding in a corner and he walks up to the locked door and fucking knocks on it. He continues to knock for a solid three minutes then finally leaves. He walks down the street a little way and I take the chance to run the fuck back to my apartment as fast as I can. Today, my informant tells me that, uh, my stalker said I wouldn't let him into the fitness center for a drink of water. He said that he had just run all the way from the domain and he just wanted water, but I wouldn't let him in. Then he switched up his story and said that he was trying to give me the drawing of the tattoo that I had asked him for. One, he didn't fucking run from anywhere. Motherfucker was wearing flip flops. Two, he had been standing still for a good 30 fucking minutes on the phone. He had gone back to his fucking apartment where there is fucking water. So why the fuck would you need to come all the way back to the fitness center to get a fucking drink of water? And three, he didn't have the drawing with him. He didn't have pockets from what I could tell and there was nothing in his fucking hands. He also claims to have talked to my neighbor that lives across from me and he said that I'm a weird crazy girl and that he should stay away from me. So if you watched my story yesterday, a fucking update for you. So you know how he talks to the maintenance guy about me all the time and the maintenance guy tells me what the fuck he says and I'm like, what the fucking fuck? What the fuck is wrong with him? So this motherfucker tells maintenance that I wouldn't let him into the fitness center to get a drink of water. That he had just run all the way from the domain and all he wanted was a drink of water. And that he heard me say, that's him, hide. And that I was with my Haitian friend. Haitian. She's fucking Chinese. So let me paint you a picture real quick of how much of a bullshit statement it is for him to say that he had just ran from the domain. He was wearing flip-flops and was just fucking standing on his phone next to the office. Uh, he also disappeared for like 20 minutes after I saw him standing there, uh, probably to go back to his apartment where there's water. So why in the hell would he need to come all the way back to the fitness center to get a fucking drink of water? Can you explain that to me? He also said that he was coming to give me the drawing that he drew for me and that he was holding it up against the door saying that it's the drawing, it's the drawing. He didn't have shit with him. Okay, he had nothing with him. He did not have the drawing. And then, talking to maintenance a little later, turns out he has spoken to my neighbor that lives across from me. Him, that I'm a weird, crazy girl, and that he should stay away from me. So not only do I not live on the same side of the property, I live in the back. So like, why the fuck would he be all the way the fuck over here? And Doug never fucking goes on that side of the property. I've never seen him over there. He's either at work or in this hallway fucking talking on his phone. So there's only one place he could have talked to him. I think this motherfucker actually knows where I live. And I'm really scared. Uh, so if y'all could please send help. I'm sick and tired of this crazy bullshit and I can't wait to get the fuck out of here. I'm gonna get the fuck out. That shook me to my core because if that's true, then he knows where the fuck I live. I knocked on my neighbor's door and asked him about it and he said he has no idea what I'm talking about. Luckily this Friday is my last day at this property as I am transferring to a new one closer to where I want to live. I'll still live here for two months. I can't wait to leave. So this post was obviously two months before I moved to this place. I requested to transfer to a new property mainly because of him but also because my manager was a fucking cunt. Like a major fucking cunt. Also something that wasn't detailed in here was that after he had, uh, you know, claimed to have talked to my neighbor, I was off one day and I'm sitting on my couch, minding my damn business, watching YouTube videos, and all of a sudden my door handle just, you know, fucking starts to turn a little bit. And then it presses in slightly like somebody was testing the door to see if it was fucking open. 
And when they realized that it wasn't fucking open, the door slowly went back into place and the handle went back up and I jumped up to try to see who the fuck was there, but I wasn't fast enough to see through the peephole. Didn't hear any fucking footsteps, so I don't know if he's a fucking ninja. I ran out to my patio to try to fucking see if I could see anybody, but like I didn't fucking see him. So all of this creepy fucking shit was going on. Meanwhile, I had been reporting all of this to my manager, to everybody in the fucking office, to the uppers, like everybody knew about this situation. I have a police report filed against him for that time that my door handle fucking moved. Um, and nobody ever fucking did anything about it. Nobody ever did anything about this creepy ass individual that was harassing one of their fucking employees. And I got a lot of comments on this that said stuff like, Well, why didn't you just tell him to fuck off? Like, that would have been fucking easy. No. No. He is fucking off in the head. And, you know, he got fucking mad at me and looked at me like he wanted to fucking murder me whenever I didn't acknowledge him when he said my name really fucking low. So for me to tell him to like fuck off or like stop because I feel uncomfortable would not be a good fucking idea. And uh, that was later confirmed because after I moved, he became sort of obsessed with one of his neighbors and he drew a picture for her too. By the way, I know all this because I was still friends with the assistant manager and she would tell me all of this stuff. She just quit because my manager was a fucking cunt to her as well, so. That's a whole different thing. So he drew a picture for her and she refused it and he keyed and pissed on her car. So no, I wasn't about to fucking tell him off. I did not need any of that fucking bullshit in my life. Also things that weren't detailed in here, this motherfucker tried to add me on Facebook and I immediately like fucking blocked him and was like, no. And then he was telling the maintenance man that like we had been talking on Facebook for a minute, like that we were conversing. I don't know, fucking weird. And that he was trying to holla at me and he was confused why I wasn't attracted to him because my boyfriend is black and he's black. So obviously I'm attracted to all fucking black guys and must be attracted to him as well. So that was fucking weird. I'll also put that picture of the tattoo that he drew for me cause God, it's just a masterpiece. So I blocked that Facebook profile and then I get a request from this other profile called Cal Leo. And it's got a generic stock image of a really buff, like black male model. And I know that because I reverse image searched it because I've seen enough catfish fucking episodes to know how to fucking do that. It's just a fucking stock photo. This profile has three fucking friends. <laughs> and he's messaging me claiming to be this guy's cousin. So he sent me a friend request from this Calvio profile. I did not accept it because I had a feeling it was him. And I just sent him a message and I was like, hello, do I know you? And his response was, and then I blocked him. And then he added me on another variation of the Cal Leo profile where he just added an extra O to the end of Leo. Then he added me from another variation of the same fucking profile, but this time it's Calvin Leo. Same fucking picture, same fucking three friends deal, like it's him. And he goes, Hello, nice to meet you with two, and I, I will screenshot this for you. Nice to meet you. And then I didn't respond to that. And then after he found my YouTube video, which he found because that coworker who had seen him draw the tattoo, I don't know if she was mad that like I left that property or whatever, but she gave him the link to that video because I had given it to her because I thought she was fucking cool. And I was warning her about all the fucking residents and their crazy shit. She's friends with him now, but whatever. She gave him that fucking link and told him to go to corporate with it. And so that's how he found it. He had commented on the video and he was like, that's my little cousin, this is messed up, blah, blah, blah. And he was like threatening to fucking sue me because I had this, like, 
Motherfucker has been stalking me and fucking making me so uncomfortable for over a fucking year. Literally have police reports filed against him. But I'm gonna get fucking sued for whatever. So this is the message that I got after he found my YouTube channel and I fucking blocked him. He tried to follow me on Instagram and I blocked him there too. That's the asshole that got me fired. Now, there were some other videos up on my channel, you know, venting, ranting about shitty days at work. The only people's names I ever said was fucking Carlos and his ass got fired. And like, that's still a video that's on my channel. And I did say uh, my manager's name, but she's a bitch. Kathy, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, Kathy. You can't find my YouTube by searching my name. I'm gonna fucking do it right now, okay? You just can't. It's not connected to my fucking name. I mean, I'm gonna search it now and see if that's still the case, but definitely then you couldn't find it. So the only way that they found my channel, found that video was because they were given a link to that fucking video. At work, I was completely professional. They were none the wiser that I even had a fucking YouTube channel, that I even knew the word fuck. Like, I was super fucking profesh, super fucking PG at work, okay? Okay, well there's gonna be a fucking watermark on this, but whatever. None of these. None of these are my fucking video, you see? Let's go to YouTube. Nope, my channel doesn't fucking come up. So... They couldn't have found this fucking channel at all. So you literally cannot find my YouTube channel by fucking searching my name, by even searching my fucking email. So they only found it because they were given a fucking link. So the day that I was fired, I was having a real good fucking day. If this is a lesson to just not say that you're happy out loud, this is fucking it. I had just gotten promoted to leasing manager like a week before that. So pay raise, a little bit more power. And then I was out secret shopping some properties with one of my coworkers. We were having a good time. I told her how happy I was and that life was just going really well and that, you know, I'm just excited for the future. We got back and I went to lunch. And when I got back from lunch, my manager is like, frantic and she calls me into her office and she's like, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I can't let you go in there blind. You have to go to corporate. They found um, some video of yours and you know, I'm really afraid that you're gonna get fired. I was pretty confident that I wasn't gonna get fired. I was like, it'll be no big deal. They'll understand it's my stalker and I've reported him and you know, I do a really good job at what I fucking do. So, you know, slap on the wrist, but they're not gonna fire me. They fucking fired me. When I went there, I sat down in this room with this bitch. I don't know what her title is, but I cannot fucking stand her. She's just very deadpan and rude all the fucking time, no matter the fuck what. She doesn't give a fuck about you or like what's going on at all. They don't give a fuck about their employee. So I sit down and it's this bitch and my new regional manager who was fine. I had no problems with her. And they were just like, So you're being terminated. Also, they spelled my name wrong on my termination papers. They spelled my name R-A-C-H-A-E-L, which I guess that was adding insult to injury. I don't fucking know. I was, you know, trying to defend myself, talk about, well, here's why I recorded this person. And they're like, that's besides the point. That doesn't matter. We don't care, blah, 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 blah. And then they were talking about how everybody in corporate has seen the rest of the videos too. And they were like smirking, like they were fucking smug. Like I was gonna feel bad that they saw me talking shit about them. Like, no, y'all are fucking terrible. My regional manager was like, they were very vulgar. And I was like, okay, cool. But this is separate from work. Like, yes, I'm talking about work, but I never said where I worked. I never said where I fucking lived. I never named the fucking company. I never said the property that I worked at. Like, nobody knows that it's you guys. Maybe one day I'll fucking expose them when I'm confident that they won't fucking sue me because they are very trigger happy with that shit. 
But that's why I fucking got fired. And all of their fucking snarky bullshit when they were firing me, whenever I was leaving, because <laughs> they said that everybody in corporate had seen it. And there's a bunch of people there. And so I was just like, thanks for the views. And walked out like, what the fuck? A bunch of fucking bullshit. I got fired because of my stalker. Like, what kind of bullshit company doesn't back their fucking people up when they have fucking police reports and they have fucking reported to you over and over and over that this person is doing this when I have physical evidence of the creepy shit that he has done for me. I will not stay silent about this bullshit. I took that video down originally, but I'm gonna put it back up and it's gonna have it where his identity is hidden so you can't tell who he fucking is, but like, it's gonna be out there. Because fuck you. Because absolutely goddamn motherfucking 100% fuck you. Anyways, happy Friday! <laughs> Friday! As if I uh, haven't complained about my previous manager enough, listen to the shit that she did today. I don't even work there anymore and she's still up my ass. So when I was there, I fucking leased to people who won't be moving in until like July and fucking August, but I got all their files ready and they're fucking prepared for whoever looks at them. I communicated with all of my future move-ins and copied all of my coworkers on them to let them know, hey, I'm not gonna be working there when you move in. Here are my coworkers if you have any questions. Of course people are fucking idiots, so they're not going to listen to that, so I keep getting emails from my fucking future move-ins, and so I kindly respond. Hey, I no longer works anymore, I've copied my coworkers on this email, so they'll be able to help you if you have any questions, best of luck, you know. So one of my move-ins emails me, asking me for the fucking prorated rent for their move-in, like how much money they have to pay when they move in on July 10th. So I email them back with, and you know, copy my coworkers like, hey, sorry, I don't work there. They'll be able to help you. I don't have your file. It's at that property. I don't work there. And my fucking old manager, this fucking bitch responds to the fucking email. Oh my God, you guys. Oh my God. Rachel, these are leases that you expect to get paid for. The girls already have to walk the units and do paperwork and stuff. So I don't understand why you can't help them with little questions. Like, bitch. People ask me little questions that I can answer all the time. Somebody asked me for the fucking pedestrian gate code. I was able to fucking help them. Like, I help people that I can. But the fucking file is at your office and it has the move-in info. I no longer have access to the system to be able to fucking tell them what their pro rate would be. I don't know the information off the top of my head. And they don't have to do any fucking paperwork for them. I did all of the paperwork. All they have to do is collect the renter's insurance and the electric account number and move them in. I fucking idiot proofed those files, all right? I put sticky notes on all of them saying exactly what is left, exactly what they fucking need. I communicated with those people and with my fucking coworkers, letting them know what the fuck is going on. And you can't fucking tell somebody a pro rate? All you have to fucking do is go to the desk where the files are, pick up the file, and open it, and it is on the lease file check list. It's just fucking crazy to me that she's still so fucking snarky and still so fucking just like nitpicky. I don't even fucking work for you anymore. Are you salty that you have to pay me five thousand fucking dollars tomorrow because I fucking leased my ass off to spite you for cutting me out of the rent bonus when my brother died? Bitch, you need to hop the fuck down off your high motherfucking horse. I don't know who the fuck you think you are, but get your snarky ass away from me. Get out of my emails. I'm not one of those people that fucking screws people over when I leave. I set everybody up for success to make sure all the shit was done so that people wouldn't have to scramble and not know what to do. I am now busy with a new property and new fucking leases. I don't have time to fucking go through and dig and answer these questions for these people. Especially when you have the answers easily fucking accessible right in front of your fucking face, you dumb bitch! Got a little heated there. Sorry, just... Bitch gets under my skin. Fuck, oh my god. Oh, but wait, one more thing. The 
fucking person that emailed me today wasn't even one of my fucking move-ins. It was one of Carlos's old fucking move-ins that I had to pick up the pieces on. And she gave that commission to fucking Kia because she wanted her to get practice on shit. So why am I getting yelled at for not being able to answer questions about something that's not even my fucking fault?